and welcome back to my channel and happy Inktober everybody. My name is Jessica and in today's video I'm going to go over my plans for Inktober 2021. I'm going to show you my prompt list, my ideas, play with my supplies, and I'm going to do my first two pieces. So stay tuned. So this year I picked a prompt list ahead of time. And I really went through prompt lists to determine which one I really connected with or really sparked some ideas for myself. And this is the one I chose. So once I picked a prompt list, I wrote everything down and started doing some thumbnails. Now, a lot of these have changed already and some of them I didn't even have thumbnails for to just start getting ideas out there. Once I did these thumbnails, I took a picture with my iPad and started doing some digital sketching and some value scales. Once I had a final sketch done, I printed it out on printer paper. So sneak peek, this is the first two days, but I printed out the basic sketch and then I'm going to transfer it to my watercolor paper. I did not want to use a sketchbook because I did not want to keep erasing and ruining the paper as I'm trying to figure out my idea. So I will be using this Fabriano watercolor paper. It is 25% cotton and 140 pounds. I will be cutting them up into half sheets and I will be transferring my sketches over to this and then inking them individually. So now that we know what kind of paper we're going to use and we have an idea of our ink drawings that we're going to make, now I want to play with my supplies on this paper to see if I can achieve the different effects and textures that I'm going to be needing when creating my pieces. Okay, so I have a lot of supplies here and I will definitely link everything in the description below if you are interested in purchasing them or checking them out. I might not use all of these supplies for my Inktober pieces, but this is where I'm going to test them out to see if I am interested in using them or not. First up, we have a set of black Pigra Sakura Micron pens in a variety of sizes. These are waterproof archival ink fine liners, and they are in very small sizes. So because these are very thin, I want to see how they will handle writing on this textured watercolor paper. Next, I have my Lamy Safari fountain pen with a medium nib. I have filled this pen with this Royer and Klinger Sketch Ink, which is waterproof. This ink is specifically for fountain pens. Ooh, I really like how this pen handles and the ink is very dark. So I might be using this to line my pieces. Next, we have the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen, and this is a very popular choice for Inktober. You can get a wide variety of lines, and because the paper is textured, you can get this nice dry brush effect, which I will definitely be using in some of my pieces. Okay, so here is the four inks completely dry. And I did a few like light washes down at the bottom. Now we're going to test out my whites. First, we have this FW Acrylic White Ink. We have this Copic Opaque White. I have a Sakura Jelly Roll gel pen. I have some Arteza White Gouache and some Turner Acrylic Gouache. So I just want to see how each of these looks on top of the inks. So here is all the swatches of the white inks and gouache paint that I have on top of 
the four black inks. So here's a look at the two final tests that I did. And after all of this, I think I'm mainly going to use the Pro Art India ink. I think it's the blackest black. It gives very smooth washes and it just seems to be doing exactly what I'm looking for. So now it's time to clean up this mess and get working on my pieces. Okay, so my first piece for day one is feathers and I'm using this masking fluid fine liner pen. And I wanted to show you at first in real time how slow and tedious this process is and then I'm going to speed it up as I finish it. I did already start um, this piece off camera because I was having issues with the masking fluid clogging up on me, which was really annoying. And if you know anything about this stuff, it is almost like a plastic. And so if it dr starts to dry, it turns into that plastic and it can clog up anything and it's kind of messy, but it definitely gives the effect that I'm going for. So I knew I wanted to do a peacock feather for this, but I didn't want to just do one feather. I thought that was going to be too simple, even though this piece is kind of simple as it is. So I thought I'd do a peacock feather pattern. And I knew I wanted the contrast of a dark background with the white feathers. So that's why I filled out the feathers with this masking fluid. And then I went over with the ink once it was dry. I tried to get certain areas that were darker along like the edge and stuff. And then do kind of maybe a lighter gray in the middle. Sorry for the background, it's my watercolor board that I'm painting on because I knew I wanted to fill the entire piece with ink and make the black go all the way to the edges. I did not want to do that on my white table um, for fear the ink would stain it and that I would not be able to get it off. So unfortunately, you'll be seeing this brown, ugly background for a lot of my Inktober pieces. I hope that doesn't bother you guys too much. So I'm just finished laying the ink in here and then I'm going to let it dry. Show you a close up of once the ink is dry but the, the masking fluid is still on there. So you can see me starting to peel the masking fluid off and it's a little bit of a tedi tedious process but in a way it's like oddly satisfying. If any of you out there have used masking fluid you probably know what I'm talking about. But once you get it started, you can kind of roll it into this ball and then just rub the ball around over the other masking fluid and it really helps lift it off easier. It turns into kind of this gross like booger looking ball, but um, it definitely works better that way, I promise. And I definitely sped through that because it took me a lot longer than I thought it would. And I figured that part would be pretty boring, so you guys probably didn't want to see that. But once I was done peeling off all the masking fluid, I went back in with the FW Dale Rowney Acrylic Artist Ink because I wanted to add more details to the feathers. I thought by using the ink because it's not quite as opaque as the other inks and gouache paint I tested that it would kind of give it more of a dimension. So I'm not sure if it made it better or if it made it too busy, but that's the thought I was going for. And again, I skipped around a lot because a lot of this stuff is very repetitive. I'm doing the same exact thing over again, and it's definitely taking a long time. So I figured I'd just cut a lot of it out. Um, once I did finish this piece, though, I did go back in and fix up some of the center of the feathers, which I did not get on camera, but you will see at the end in my picture that I posted on Instagram. 
So here's a close-up of the semi-finished piece and I will show you guys the picture I posted on Instagram where it is the final piece where I did edit the centers of the feathers. Day two is runes, and I'm using my Pentel pocket brush pen to outline the letters of the rune stones. And this was one of the first pieces that I had a almost clear idea of exactly what I wanted to do for my Inktober piece, and I was really excited to do this one, though I did run into some mishaps down the road, which I will definitely show you guys. Um, which was unfortunate and made this piece a little longer than it needed to be, but it's done. So I used that fine liner masking fluid pen again. Uh, I think this is going to be a favorite throughout Inktober, but I just wanted to do some dots like stars or just for some added texture. So once those started to dry, I went in with almost like a wet and wet technique and lay down some of the ink washes and in certain areas I was dropping in some salt to get that grainy texture effect and I wasn't doing it everywhere on the piece I was just only doing it in certain parts I was really trying to work fast doing this because I did not want the ink to dry and leave those hard edges that would make it really noticeable. So even though this is sped up, I did kind of do it quickly. And then that's when the first disaster happened. So I thought the ink was completely dry and I went to rub off the salt and it was not completely dry and I smeared ink across my runes which I wanted to keep as white as possible so to remedy this situation I already had that acrylic art artist acrylic white ink out in my palette so I figured I would just go over the whole stone and hopefully cover up as much of the ink as possible I figured it would be too tedious to try to paint around the letter itself, so I just figured I'd cover the whole thing, let it dry, and then just go back over and hope that it didn't look too bad. And if I do anything with this art in the future, I can obviously edit it a lot better in a, you know, Photoshop. So again, I was just doing some touch-ups from the salt, and once I was done doing that, I started to remove the dried up masking fluid for the stars, or for what I guess you could call stars in the background. And then I, <laughs> this is kind of where I ran into almost my second mistake. I knew I wanted to make the stones look 3D, so I took my Pentel pocket brush pen and went around the edge of all of them. And then I wanted to add a spatter effect with the same acrylic white ink with a tooth toothbrush. And upon spattering, I was like, oh my gosh, I just spattered all over my letters and what I just did. So I just continued to keep going with that and I was like I'll just have to go over it once again which is fine um, it's all a learning process I suppose so here I am going over those first letters that I messed up again with my Pentel pocket brush pen and then once I fix those original letters then I do all the touch-ups of going over all the letters that have the spattered white ink on them 
and then I also go back around each stone to give that shadowed effect to make them look more 3D. And then once I clean them up, I feel like they really do pop a lot more, which is exactly the look I'm going for. So in the end, I guess it turned out how I wanted. It just, you know, took a couple turns and zigzags to get to that final result though. So here is a close-up look at the final piece, and I will show you guys the photo that I posted on Instagram. Definitely be sure to follow me over on Instagram if you want to see daily pieces. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and definitely hit subscribe if you want to see all my Inktober pieces. I will definitely be making a playlist and putting them all in there and hopefully I'll be able to complete this challenge. My dream goal is to complete the challenge and have 31 pieces at the end and then I would love to make a little zine to sell in my shop. If that's something you guys are interested, stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!